Welcome back, Chemistry 30. The next section is 8.3, covalent bonding. So in the previous video, we looked at ionic bonding, um, the forming uh, of ions, and then electrostatic attraction. And earlier, we talked about covalent bonding dealing with electron sharing, when we talked about over here. So covalent bonding in which molecules are formed by the sharing of electrons between atoms. So we'll take a look at how that works with this section. All right. So the vast majority of chemical substances do not have the characteristics of ionic materials. Most substances which we come into daily contact, such as water, tend to be gases, liquids, or solids with low melting points. If it's low melting points, also means low boiling points. Many such, uh, many such as gasoline, vaporize readily, especially if we're talking room temperature. Uh, gases turn into vapors rel relatively quickly. Many are pliable in their solid forms, so if they are solid, they're flexible or bendable. That's what pliable means. Uh, for example, plastic bags and paraffin. For the very large class of the substance that do not behave like ionic substances, we need a different model for the bonding between atoms. G. N. Lewis reasoned that atoms might acquire noble gas electron configuration by sharing electrons with other atoms. A chemical bond formed by sharing a pair of electrons is referred to as a covalent bond, as we saw earlier. The hydrogen molecule, H2, provides the simplest example of a covalent bond. When two hydrogen atoms are close to each other, the two positively charged nuclei uh, repel each other, though. The two negatively charged electrons also repel each other, and the nuclei and electrons attract each other, as shown in this figure. So even though the two nu the hydrogen nuclei are both positive and positive, they repel. Electrons and electrons repel. There's a strong attraction between nuclei and the electrons that are in between the two. And because the molecule is stable, we know that the attractive forces must overcome any repulsive ones that are there. So we take a look at how this works. Uh, by using a qu quantum mechanical model analogous to those used for atoms. We calculate the distribution of electron density of molecules. Such a cal calculation for H2 shows that the attractive force between the nuclei and the electrons cause the electron density to concentrate between here. So in other words, what that means is that the valence electrons of one hydrogen atom and another hydrogen atom concentrate in between the two nuclei. As a result, the overall electrostatic attractions are, interactions are attractive. Thus, the atoms of, in H2 are held together principally because the two positive nuclei are attracted to the concentration of negative charge between them. So those electrons must be sitting in between there, holding it together. And a key point here, in essence, the shared pair of electrons in any covalent bond acts like a kind of glue to bind them together. So you have the negative part here the positive from the proton, positive from the proton in the nucleus, so that all gets held together. So the electrons in there act like a glue almost. Okay, uh, the next page here. So ionizing an H2 molecule to become an H2 plus molecule, of course to do that you'd have to take away one of those electrons, changes the strength of the bond. Based on the description of covalent bonding previously given, do you expect the HH bond in H2 plus that has one electron gone to be weaker or stronger than the HH bond in a regular H2 molecule. So what we just talked about is that the electrons act as a kind of glue holding it together. So obviously if I take one of those electrons away, it's like I have less glue, they're holding it together. So weak, so it would be weaker if I took an electron away to make it an H2 plus ion due to fewer electrons acting as the glue holding the molecule together. All right. Uh, if I look at Lewis structures here, the formation of covalent bonds can be represented with Lewis symbols. The formation of the H2 molecule, as we saw here, uh, from two H atoms can be represented like this. So each H has, it's a group one element, so one electron, one electron. And uh, in that first level where hydrogen is, it's stable when it gains two, when it has two electrons like that of helium. Helium is the only noble gas that's stable with two electrons. In that first energy level, we can have a maximum of two electrons, so that's all we need. So if they share, so if they, if those electrons are in this vicinity between the two H's, we can view it like this. The hydrogen on the left has two electrons, it's full. The hydrogen on the right has two electrons, it's full. 
So both of those hydrogens, due to sharing, would have an equal number of electrons. We could say that each of them has two electrons due to that sharing. Part of the time in this hydrogen, part of the time with this hydrogen. So in the forming of the covalent bond, each hydrogen atom acquires a second electron, achieving the stable two electron noble gas configuration like helium, as I mentioned. Okay, And once again, helium is the only one that has two in electrons in its stable state. Uh, formation of covalent bond between two chlorine atoms to give a Cl2 molecule, another Hofbrinkel, can be represented in a similar way. So th just drawing the Lewis structure, seven electrons, seven electrons. So cl each chlorine needs one more, so it shares one to get one, just like here, share one to get one. And a uh, similar thing happens there. So if I take a look here, use, use this little red cover. The chlorine on the left has eight. The chlorine on the right has eight. So everything's stable. Sharing one to get one. Uh, by sharing the bonded electron pair, each chlorine atom has eight electrons, an octet, in its valence shell, thus achieving the noble gas configuration of argon. So argon is one away, one to the right of chlorine. Structures shown here for H2 and Cl2 are called Lewis structures or Lewis electron dot structures because of the dots. In writing Lewis structures, though, because it, it could get complicated once we have more than two um, elements bonded together, one or more than one atom. So what's usually done here, uh, we use a line to represent a shared pair and any unshared electron pairs just simply leave them as dots. Written this way, the Lewis structures for H2 and Cl2 would be so here's a shared pair here. We represent that with a line. The line indicating these are bonded together due to that shared pair. Over here, the shared pair in between chlorine, we use a line to represent that. And then the remaining electrons around each chlorine, of course, are written as dots. Okay, so that's usually common practice and in the pictures look a little bit better. They don't become uh, overwhelming, especially when we have more than two atoms bonded together. For nonmetals, the number of valence electrons in a neutral atom is the same as the group number, as we mentioned earlier. Therefore, one might expect if you're in the group 7A, such as chlorine, you have seven electrons, you need one more, so it would form one covalent bond. Share one to get one. Uh, if we have elements in the 6A group, of course there are six electrons uh, there, we need two more. So share two to get the two that we need. So two covalent bonds we'd expect. Group 5A elements, such as nitrogen, it needs six, seven, eight, it needs three more. So share three to get three. Whatever you need, that's something you need to share. And th then the group 4A elements, share four to get four to get the eight. These predictions are born out, born out in many compounds, or arise in many compounds, as in, for example, the compounds with hydrogen of the non-metals of the second row of the periodic table. So you can take a look at a couple of examples here. So fluorine and hydrogen. Okay, so you can see that fluorine is a group seven, so it needs one. Hydrogen is a group one, so it needs one. So you can see bonding together. If I just use the electron structure, the Lewis symbol using dots, I, I represented hydrogen here as blue, fluorine is red. And to distinguish between the, the electrons, I made hydrogen's electron an X here. So again, if you take a look, hydrogen uh, uh, donate or has one to get one. Fluorine uses one to get one, so fluorine has seven. Hydrogen has two, so it's stable. A water molecule, an oxygen is a group six, so it needs two more, so shares one to get one. And similarly, hydrogen shares one to get one. So if you're looking at just the dot structure, we can see here that oxygen, one, two, three, four, then five, six. So it's sharing two to gain two. So if I cover up the hydrogens here, you can see that oxygen has eight electrons, and each hydrogen has two electrons. Okay, I think I'll stop the video there, then we'll take a look at the next two examples here and uh, go with that.